Welcome back. In this video, we'll talk about the process of designing a business model. The trigger for designing or redesigning your business model can come from anywhere. Maybe you want to differentiate your offering from new competitors. Or you have a great idea for a new product and want to design a business model to bring it to market. Or you want to respond to customers' wishes. Take Gordon, a restaurant owner. He organized a group discussion, a focus group, with customers to find out what they liked and disliked about his restaurant. And to his surprise, Gordon learned that they were not so enthusiastic about the standing tables in his restaurant. Now there are actually many ways to describe a business model, but as you remember from our first video, the core elements are always the same. Who are your customers? What will you offer to them? How will you realize this offering? What activities, resources and partners are needed? And, the bottom line, how do you make money? Designing a business model is about making choices for the business model components, answering the questions mentioned. And it's always a good idea to design your business model in a structured way. Because by structuring your thinking and visualizing your business model, it becomes much easier to communi communicate about it. And to make choices and underlying assumptions much more explicit. Is this really what users want? Can we make enough money this way? Testing your choices and assumptions is a key part of your design process. Now in developing a business model, you will have to make trade-offs for various business model choices. With regard to customers, a trade-off exists if you want to address a niche or a mass market. And trade-off exists in what you offer your customers and the prices you charge. If you provide too little added value, then you won't have any customers. But if you provide too much value to your customers, you may lose money. So from our research, we know that some of these trade-offs are more important than others and are even critical to your business success. We call these critical design issues. For example, we found that how you will charge for a service is critical. And also, a design issue like the arrangements you make with your partners is critically important. When designing a business model, it is crucial that you are aware of these critical design issues and trade-offs and that you are able to test options and assumptions. Take again Gordon, our restaurant owner. He currently has some standing tables in his restaurant to save space, but he learned that most customers prefer to sit instead of stand up during their meal. He therefore has to make the trade-off between efficient use of space and cost versus customer value. So designing a business model is an iterative process as well as a balancing act. Therefore, we advocate design thinking when it comes to designing your business models. Design thinking puts humans and users first. It views design not just as making a product or service look nice, but as a way to find a balance between Desirability, what do users value? Feasibility, what is technically possible? And viability, what is financially sound? You design something and then you test as much as possible with users, stakeholders and experts. You have to keep pivoting and adapting till you get a balanced business model. The notion of critical design issue, issues helps you to be focused on those aspects that really matter. So designing a business model is an iterative process and different phases can be distinguished. In the ideation phase, you collect ideas, you make sketches and maybe draw some first designs for your new business model. Brainstorming is actually a useful technique in this phase. In a design or prototype phase, you design a more complete description of your business model using some structured business model language. We still call this a prototype, a first fairly complete design that is ready for the test phase. Testing and redesigning is an iterative process in which you talk to customers and stakeholders. You do calculations and you try to converge to a satisfying design. Now there are tools available that can help you in the different design phases. For example, for ideation, Gordon, the resident owner, used a focus group to get opinions and discuss new ideas with his customers. And for the design of your business model, there are several methods and tools available. Some of these will be discussed later. 
other tools will help you with particular components of the business model. And for testing, there are tools to help you evaluate the attractiveness of your offering, to check the financial soundness of your business model, or to assess if your business model is future-proof. You can start to design a business model by yourself or via brainstorming in a group. The Business Model Canvas is a simple and visual tool that can help you with this. This tool is explained in more detail in a separate video and is also used in the assignments. So to summarize, you have learned how a design approach can help you to develop viable business models in a structured way. Viable business models create value for your customers and revenues for yourself. Designing business models requires trade-offs, iterations and a lot of testing to get it right. Practical tools can help you with this. In the assignment, we will come back to trade-offs and some tools. Have fun.